Hi everyone and welcome to Island Block. Island Block is a blockchain and cryptocurrency educational platform where you can learn everything you need to know about blockchain and cryptocurrency. Now this is our very first video and today we'll be talking about why cryptocurrency is the future. To have an in-depth understanding of what cryptocurrency really is, we'll have to start off by talking about the history of money how it all started and where we are today now this will have to take us all the way back to the barter system now what is the barter system the barter system is a system in which one commodity is exchanged with another commodity according to wikipedia barter is a system of exchange where participants in a transaction directly exchange goods or services for other goods or services without using a medium of exchange such as money. Now this simply meant at that time that goods and services were exchanged for other goods and services. So if you had rice, you could exchange rice for fish or if you had beans, you could exchange beans for rice. Now we evolved from the barter system to the use of physical objects like feathers, shells, beads and cowries as a medium of exchange. Now, the values were believed to be stored in those items because at that time, people saw those items as precious or valuable items. And from here, we moved on to commodity money and precious metals. Now, commodity money is money whose value comes from a commodity of which it is made. A good example is arrowhead over here, which is made of, you know, some precious metals and then rice grains and gold powder. Now these commodity monies, their values were gotten from the items from which they were made and thus they were automatically believed or regarded as valuable items and could be exchanged for other items of equal value. Now the main functions of money are distinguished as a medium of exchange a unit of account, a store of value, and a standard of deferred payment. Now these qualities were observed to exist in gold and also silver to a greater extent than were seen to exist in the other precious metals that were available at that time. And as a plus, because of the scarcity of gold, gold was then regarded as the first true and real money. These qualities made gold and silver to serve as the standard in the exchange of precious metals. Then evolution happened again and we now had paper money. Now over here what you can see is the first ever issued paper money to exist. Now because of this paper money served as a medium of exchange for goods and services within an economy so goods and services were exchanged within the economy for notes issued by the government of that particular economy now these notes were regarded as you know paper money so every currency that was issued was only valid and usable within that economy in which it was issued now later on in the year 1944 in the conference of all the world's allied nations, the World War II allied nations, the Bretton Woods standard was formed. The Bretton Woods standard replaced the gold standard at that time and the US dollar served as the global currency. By so doing, it established America as the global power in the world economy. This happened because at that time, after the World War, the US was in possession of three-fourths of the world's gold supply and because gold was regarded as the first true money of which has in its value, the US was recognized as the world power and hence the value of every other currency was pegged to the value of the US dollar and the value of the US dollar was pegged to the value of gold. This meant that every US dollar note that was issued was directly redeemable by its equivalent value in gold. So the US dollar notes that were issued at that time 
were termed as gold certificates. So over here you can see gold certificates, gold certificates. This meant that this $50 note was directly redeemable by its equivalent value in gold. Later, in 1971, the U.S. experienced a massive stagflation, a combination of an inflation and recession. And in response to this, President Nixon decided to devalue the U.S. dollar by printing more notes. But then the major problem was his plan backfired because now people started redeeming their now devaluing dollar for gold and President Nixon eventually decided to sever the gold standard and completely remove the direct convertibility of the U.S. dollar to gold. Accordingly, I have directed the Secretary of the Treasury to take the action necessary to defend the dollar against the speculators. I have directed Secretary Connolly to suspend temporarily the convertibility of the dollar into gold or other reserve assets except in amounts and conditions determined to be in the interest of monetary stability and in the best interest of the United States. Because of this removal of the gold standard, the US dollar could now be printed whenever needed without needing any physical gold to back up its value. Now, over the years, the US dollar and several other fiat currencies have greatly devalued. And this has proven that fiat currency is not a true store of value. One of the major futures and functions of money is a store of value. And if over the years and over a long period of time, these monies, fiat, do not store value, this just means that it cannot be regarded as money and as a true store of value. Thank you for watching. Now, in our next video, we'll start off by talking about cryptocurrency, blockchain technology, and why exactly it is the future. Bye bye. Yeah. yeah.